Are you guys able to hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. So uh, we are done with the HTML5 and CSS3. So just I'm going to show you the course content for JavaScript. So today we are going to start with JavaScript. So here you can see first, uh, we are going to learn about like the, what JavaScript is and how it works. And then introduction to programming, what programming language is. Then about JavaScript language behavior, we will see how uh, it behaves in different, different browsers, then keywords and reserve words uh, with the, uh, like both are same or different that we will see then variable or identifier we are going to learn about then data types values and its types in javascript we will see then we will learn about like what operand and operator expression instruction and statements are then we'll see like how many ways are there to comment your code in js then types of operators so for today i'll try to complete these things like till comments Okay, after that, we have types of operators. You can see unary, binary, and ternary operators. Then conditional statements, then control statements, difference between undefined and undeclared, we will see. Then types of error in JavaScript. Then scope, function, and its types. So all these things are there. I think you have already gone through this list. So we are going to start with this one today. So anyone, is having any question before starting this? Anything related to CSS, HTML? Okay. Miss. Here we have index.html so anyone is having idea about javascript what javascript is do you know about javascript no okay uh, like uh, no one is familiar with javascript I'm familiar, sir. Okay, so yeah, like uh, please speak up. Uh, if I'm asking something, so please speak up on. Uh, then I'll also get to know like whether you are uh familiar or not. So okay, fine. So uh, you know like JavaScript a bit about like uh, have you worked on or just uh, you have learned this syntax? No, sir. Just working sir now. I am working on JSP pages. Uh, in the JSP pages, we are uh, using JavaScript, jQuery, and okay. That. Okay. Anyone else? No sir. Okay. Fine. Fine. So here I'm going to uh, just open a blank page. For that, I'm typing just see about colon blank. Okay. Here we have blank page. Simply what you can do here, you can right click and just inspect. And once if you inspect like this, you will get this elements tab and next to it, we have console. So here you can write your JavaScript code. Just why I'm writing here that uh, immediately we will be able to see here the results. Okay, but in real time, uh, you can use this console tab just to debug your code okay otherwise you have to write here in your file that also we are going to look okay so what javascript is actually that we will see basic introduction i'm going to start with here okay so JavaScript is a programming language. So what type of programming language do you know? Uh, whether it's a interpreted or a compiled? Interpreted, sir. 
interpreted okay okay we will see and uh, like a few moment like what exactly it is and how it works that we are going to see so introduction to javascript we are going to see here so who has developed this language anyone knows about that the person who has developed okay sir brandon ike he has developed this language and the initial code project name was some people uh, pronounce it as mocha and someone uh, pronounce it as mocha okay so the code name of that project was mocha so he has developed this language just in 10 days okay in 10 days so in 1995 september 1995 they have released the netscape navigator browser actually before that they were using just uh, like different different languages uh, just for the like native applications but they have thought like why not we are supposed to create a browser and for that browser what they have done they have created a new language called livescript they have given this name as livescript because the purpose of this language was mainly to create any element uh, like interactive before that just they were creating simple hyperlink and they were just changing some colors of that and styling they were not able to interact with that that's why they have created this language and after that at that time of uh, like uh, in 1995 the java was the very popular language so that's why what they have thought like if we'll give the name of this language as javascript so it will also get popular so you can say this is the like sibling of that language but there is no relation between java and javascript except this name okay java is totally different language and javascript is another like totally different you can say and uh, when they have given this name as javascript you can see in december 1995 okay when they have released navigator 2.0 beta 3 now after that they thought of like every time uh, you might have uh, heard of like es1 es6 es5 means ecmascript 6 ecmascript 7 like that you have heard of so why a standardization was required for javascript you know microsoft guys what they did they have taken this uh, like uh, navigator code javascript code and they have uh, done some reverse engineering on that and they have created their own language called jscript okay so at that time they have created jscript for their own browser uh, that is internet explorer okay and these people have uh, developed a new browser you can say these days uh, that organization name is like mozilla organization so at that time they have developed that navigator browser so for that purpose they have created that javascript language okay so for different different browser like google uh, has developed this chrome browser then for apple you can see here we have safari and uh, for microsoft they have internet explorer and edge and here for mozilla here we have the mozilla firefox so in google chrome they are using javascript engine called v8 okay in safari they are using squirrel fish for internet explorer they are using chakra and for firefox they're using a spider monkey so they all have their own javascript engine if they will uh, like create different different language for uh, that uh, or different different rule set for their own engine so the globally people will not be able to use that isn't it so what they have thought like why should not go for this uh, language as a standardized language so everyone should follow the same same thing and based on that only they are going to implement the browser features so that's why they uh, standardized that one uh, by the ECMA International and from that time I'll show you like uh, 
uh, what we say the evolution of JavaScript and how actually they have uh, standardized and how they were releasing the different different versions of the JavaScript. So what was the purpose to develop JavaScript? The main thing, as I said, to make any like website live, interactive or dynamic, they have created that language. So evolution of JavaScript here. So firstly, they have created or uh, they have released the first standardized version, version of JavaScript was ES1, that is ECMAScript 1, okay, in 1997. Thereafter, they have released ECMAScript 2, okay. And that was also known as like ECMA 262. If you will search on Google, you will get the documentation as well. So they have released in 1998. ES3 they have released in that they have added some feature you can see here, like uh, they have added array, regular expression, okay, strings and uh, basic like control statements they have added in 1993. Then they have released E, uh, this version ES4, ECMAScript 4, okay, and in that they have added so many features actually, okay, and after that they have released the e ECMAScript 5 that was a bit like a stable version, but not, uh, they have not added these things in this language, they have skipped, uh, skipped uh, some of the features which they have uh, released earlier in ECMAScript 5. And after that, they have released ECMAScript 5.1 in 2011. Till that time, this language was not stable and it was not uh, that much popular, you know, because till that time they were using just uh, this, lang this language as a scripting language only. After that, what happened, you know, in 2015, they have released ECMAScript 6 and this was the like very stable version of the JavaScript. And by using this language, anyone uh, should be able to like uh, create any kind of application, whether it's a web-based application or it is a mobile application, or uh, you can say like a desktop application also, they were able to uh, develop. And even uh, after creation of this language, uh, we say like, the Node.js on top of this one, they have created a backend uh, supported language also. So by using this language, like we were able to do anything at that time. So from that time, this language actually uh, become popular. So everyone started using this language. Okay. So if you will use Electron.js, you will be able to do like any, uh, what we say a standalone application or windows based application if you are going to use a simple javascript by using that you can create any web application if you will go with the react native you will be able to develop the mobile application okay if you use node.js you will be able to do like the backend things if you want to connect with server you can use that node.js and after that they have improvised every year they uh, they were releasing like the new version of uh, the ICMA script. And then they thought like every year, okay, every year in June, we will release a new version. So from 2015, you can see like continuously they are releasing in month of June, the new version of the ICMA script. So after ES11, what they have thought like, if we will give name like this ES1, ES2, so till 11, it was fine. But after that, they said, like whatever the next version will come after 2021, we will say it as ES next, okay? So now if they are going to release any new version, you can say that is ES next, okay? Instead of saying script six or seven. Now, why JavaScript is so popular and people love it. So we can, as I said, we can develop any kind of application like desktop application, a standalone application, web-based application, mobile-based application, anything we can develop. Okay, even we can use this language in IoT, internet of things. Another thing is here, 
I have taken this uh, chart from the Stack Overflow and as per their survey in 2021, JavaScript is the top most language. Here you can see the scripting language and even the markup language is also there. So in all of them, like JavaScript is on top, you can see here. So 64.96% people are using this language. Another reason you can see here, like here you have like huge support, online support. If you will get stuck somewhere, you can take help online. So there is a huge community. Okay, so 15 million plus developers are uh, using JavaScript. Another reason is you will get like good salary actually. Okay. Now, we will see about this uh, keywords and reservoirs later. In slides, just I have prepared for that only, like that I can show you. Okay, fine. So first introduction to JavaScript, we have seen like the basic thing, what JavaScript is, the history. Now, what is programming language? What is programming language? Anyone knows about that? If we pass some instruction to machine, okay, so the set of instructions when we say like the do multiple things okay that is known as programming means we program the machine according to our requirement okay so you can say that set of instruction is nothing but programming and the language which we use to pass this that instruction is known as the programming language so it depends, like we do have like many uh, types of language. So here we are going to learn about JavaScript. So this is also a programming language, but what type of programming language we will see here. So this is a high level programming language. Why I'm saying high level? Because here we are not giving the much information about like low level information, machine information here. Simply we are writing everything here. Let's say uh, if you have to just give a pop-up, then simply you can write alert, okay? And you can write here, hello. If I'll press enter here, we'll get a pop-up, see, hello. And this pop-up is coming from where? This is not the part of JavaScript engine. This is a part of browser. Okay, so JavaScript engine is a different thing and browser feature is totally different. So DOM is different thing. DOM is just provided by the browsers. Okay, and JavaScript engine has some like the basic uh, uh, things that I'll show you. So as I, you have seen here, if I'm writing some See, I'm getting a pop-up and here text is hello. Another thing here we have, if you want to print something here on the console, simply you can type console like in or print kind of thing. So for that I'm using here console dot log, okay. I'm getting here, hello. Okay. So like that, if you want to print something on console, you can use console.log. Okay. If you want to just document dot write. In document, if you want to display something, simply you have to write here. See here, if I'm writing document dot write hello, here it is coming, hello. Okay, so these things are like uh, the part of DOM. We have many ways that we can display any message. So that we will see. But before that, I think Anil said that this is a interpreted programming language. Okay. So we will see what exactly interpreted and compiled programming languages. But before that, Anil, uh, can you, 
please tell me like uh, what do you mean by interpreted programming language sir, interpreted means step uh, line by line it will compile uh, com uh, compiler means uh, it will be total program will execute at once at once yes sir scripting languages are in interpreted languages and uh, programming languages are mostly compiler uh, compiler compiler it will be happen okay that's fine okay okay so as i said uh, this is a high level programming language because you can type this language in simple english language okay so human can easily understand what is the meaning of that so that's why it is known as high level programming language so whenever someone is asking like what is javascript you can say javascript is a high level programming language another thing i'm going to just clarify that whether it is a compiled or interpreted programming language okay fine so simply if i'm writing console dot log okay here i'm writing like hi okay if i'll press enter it will just immediately it will execute but if you want to write something in the next line press shift enter okay shift enter now again i'm going to write console dot log hello okay again i'm going to press shift enter welcome so what will be the output if i'll press enter anyone can tell me e hello welcome online wise hi hello welcome well correct <coughs> excuse me right you are getting hi hello welcome that's fine so it means that here it is reading line by line isn't it so line by line it is executing means it is executing first line then second then third right okay fine so by seeing this you can say that it is a interpreted programming language because it is executing line by line isn't it yes, anil yes, yeah okay fine <clears throat> now what i'm going to do is here i'm going to write you know how to declare a variable in javascript anyone the basic thing var keyword using var keyword acha okay var we will use and then identifier name like in any programming language uh, like uh, in c let's say in c we write simply if you have to define an integer int then variable name then its value isn't it so like that here what i'm going to do here i'm going to use uh, let's say data i'm going to use this name okay where data fine and here i'm going to assign a value in it where data is equal to 10 means here i'm going to declare a variable called data in that i'm assigning value 10 now if i want to print the value of that data what i have to do anil anyone can tell me simply i need to write data console dot log data correct okay fine so i'm getting hi hello welcome and then 10 correct now what i'm going to do is i'll copy this one okay simply we'll paste it here okay
and instead of data here i'm going to write magic okay magic is equal to 10 and here we have var no i'm going to write simply vr what vr intentionally i'm making this mistake typo you can say or type error okay now tell me anyone can guess what will be the output here hi hello welcome after done is not Hi, hello, welcome. And then we'll get error. Okay. <clears throat> if it will print hi, hello, welcome, then error, then you can say this is a interpreted programming language. Let's say if it is not going to print anything, then it will print or not. It will print sir. It will print what? Uh, uh, he hello welcome. Okay, hi hello welcome. Then it will give error. Yeah. Okay, let's see the magic now. What it is giving me here? Uncaught syntax error. Unexpected identifier. I'm not getting hi hello welcome. So can you please tell me now? how javascript engine knows when i'm in first line so before executing this line how javascript engine knows that in line number four we have some error it means it is not executing line by line something is happening here isn't it yes sir so never ever from now onwards if someone is asking like what type of language is JavaScript, never say this is a interpreted programming language. This is also a compiled programming language and I'm going to prove you that, okay? So the first thing as I have proved here, if you are doing some intentional or any syntactic mistake, it is not going to execute this one. Any piece of code, okay? If you are going to use, uh, going to uh, make any syntactic mistake, it will not execute your program. It will fail there, okay? So it means here something else is happening. If you are familiar with like the, uh, like, uh, the syntax error or the parsing, if you are a computer science student, then you can easily understand what the parsing is and how many phases are there in uh, like compilation so what happens you know first it will check the syntax complete syntax it is a dual pass programming language first you need to understand it is a dual pass programming language in first pass it will compile it means in compilation we have like many phases that i'll show you okay so what it will do it will check first the complete code whether you are uh, making any mistake or not. So simply, I'm going to copy this one. I'll copy this one, okay. We'll open AST, Explorer. We'll paste it over here, okay? So language I have already selected as JavaScript, okay? JavaScript, we'll paste it. So what I'm getting here, in line number four, you can see, okay? In line number four, uh, four I'm getting unexpected token. I'm not getting any JSON data or any tree just i'm going to comment this line see or we'll remove it from here see now what is happening this is a program the tree structure it is showing you and we have the complete body so body means 
the code here, whatever you have written. The first statement here you have, that is expression statement. Okay, if I'll expand it, you see here we have type as expression. So this is known as complete thing is known as expression. Okay, now see, it is a starting at zero and ending at 18. So if you'll count here, zero, one, two, three, like that. Okay. This is a call expression. Call expression means here you are calling a method. So that you will learn later. Just I'm showing you the structure, how compiler will uh, actually parse this one and will create the AST means abstract syntax tree. So the first phase is, uh, let me just add the pen tab. Just give me one minute. Yeah, so I'm just going to open this one. It's taking time. Yeah. Okay, so what it is going to do simply see first it will take your code, whatever you have written. No? Okay, so compiler. Here we have let's say compiler. So in compiler we have first. We can say here syntax analyzer. Okay. So, what it will do if you are writing, let's say, where, okay, x is equal to 10. So, it will check the syntax. So, for the each and every language, we have type of grammar. If you have, if you are going to learn English, let's say, Okay, for that we have grammar. Okay, if you are going to learn any language like that, you have a grammar, language grammar. So, as per that language grammar, okay, the syntax or the structure should be correct. Like if I'm going to write this is a pen. So here we have a correct syntax. If I'll reverse the order pen or uh, is this, there's no meaning of that. So as per that language grammar, just I'm going to erase this one for now. Okay. So here we have ECMAScript. 
so for ECMA script we have we have a language grammar okay and where it is it is defined in javascript engine and javascript engine is nothing but a piece of code only okay where uh, they have written some kind of validation that if they are writing like in this form like where then some identifier name then equal to then this so it will check that language grammar syntax whether it is correct as per this language grammar or not so this is kind of validate okay lexical analyzer is also there so lexical analyzer first let me explain you like from the beginning okay so here let's say we have lexical analyzer so lexical analyzer will do what you know if you have like where x is equal to 10 then semicolon so it will just break each and every word and operator without its meaning let's say where x then equal to then 10 like that so it is just breaking in just uh, you can say a uh, stream of strings then after that what it will do it will pass these strings to the syntax analyzer okay and syntax analyzer will validate whether as per the language grammar it is correct or not so it will check here where okay where is a keyword x is an identifier name equal to is one operator 10 is a numeric numeric value or you can say number literal and this is a line terminator okay so it will validate if it will pass it will say yeah it is uh, correct as per this language grammar then only it will go to the next phase otherwise here only it will generate the syntax error so if you are getting failed at this stage so code is not going to execute the same thing happened just now when i have written like this we are and magic is equal to 10 i have written like that so vr is not defined it will say hey this is not defined this is not a, a correct keyword which you are using and even though if you are using this it is not defined the structure is not correct i'm expecting here that it should be where okay here only it will get filled so it means if it is going with these phases now if it is failing here it will give you syntax error if it is passing it will go to the next phase and there it will create ast abstract syntax tree okay so that's what i actually i was about to tell you here uh, let me do one thing yeah here so before creating this abstract syntax tree you know it is going with that phase lexical analyzer phase and then syntax analyzer phase okay first it will break each and every word in uh, like a array or you can say the uh, stream of word and then it will pass to the syntax analyzer where syntax analyzer will just validate it whether as per this language grammar which language grammar javascript language grammar or you can say ecmascript language grammar is this one is correct or not if it is failing there it will give you error if it is success then only it will create a abstract syntax tree okay so if you want to see the correct structure here we have one online tool is joint js i think <clears throat> maybe i'm not sure whether i'm opening the correct yes i think here only uh, 
So in resources tab, you go. Okay. If we'll scroll down, simply come down. Here we have abstract syntax trees. Click on this option. You can note down this uh, path also if you want. Just you have to type joint JS, click on resources, and there you will get JavaScript AST visualizer. So what I'm going to do is simply I'm going to remove each and everything from here. And here I'm going to write, let's say, where A is equal to 42. Okay. And then show AST. Here you have, click on that. So you can see here, number of nodes are five, number of tokens are five. See how it is. Observe here, when I'm hovering here, how it is visualizing here. Keyword. What is where? Where is a keyword? A is an identifier. So whenever you are seeing identifier, that is nothing but user defined, or you can write anything like over there. And there is some naming convention, some rules, nomenclatures are there that we need to follow. We'll see uh, later how actually it works. So second thing is identified. See, it is getting highlighted here when I'm hovering here, see? Then we have here punctuator that is like a special character you can say here is equal to sign then here we have 42 as a numeric value and here again we have this uh, punctuator so how it is working see as i said it will break each and everything in a separate character or separate word so what tool is doing that all those things are part of compiler only that uh, lexical analyzer syntax analyzer, AST, uh, like uh, we say like intermediate code generator, actually. So all those things are the part of compile compiler only. So lexical analyzer, you can see here is breaking all this statement, this complete statement into a small, small things. And now if you'll see here the structure, I'm scrolling here. See, I'm just going to show you. If you can see that this is a complete program. See on the right side, you are getting that in pop up where a is equal to 42. Now, variable declaration is this is complete a statement is known as variable declaration. In variable declaration, here we have a, and a is nothing but an identifier. Okay, this is declarator. A is an identifier, and 42 is value. So you are getting this tree like a structure. Okay, so this is known as abstract syntax tree and how it is breaking, you can see here. Okay, even though if you are going to write instead of this, right now you are not familiar with the function and all, then also I'm going to show you here. See function, demo, okay. Console.log. And then, hi. And just what I'm going to do is, I'm going to show you the AST. So see here, function is a keyword. Demo is an identifier. This one is a punctuator, like open parents, close parents. Then here we have open curly brace. So see, each and everything it is breaking in a like a, a kind of a stream or array. Here we have console. Okay, this is also an identifier, then punctuator. Okay, then identifier again. Then here, see, opening uh, parents, then a string here we have. So if you will see here, it is going to create again a tree like a structure for this also. And it will tell you like the each and everything, each and every detail what is call expression, what is member expression, everything it will explain you, okay? So here you can see the structure, how it is working. So I have proved you here that JavaScript is a compiled programming language, not like any other programming language. Compiled means you have to first compile it and then it will give you a, a like a 
object file and then you need to run again that object file then you will get, uh, get a like some executable file not like that internally on the fly only all these things are happening when you are executing so it is first compiling and then immediately it is sending that file internally to the javascript engine to execute that okay so in javascript engine itself we have that javascript compiler as well as interpreter is also there that also i'm going to show you but don't say like this language is itself a interpreted programming language this is not this is a compiled programming language any question here thank you sir actually uh, uh, i misunderstood but uh... I got it clear. Uh, no, actually, many people think that this is a interpreted programming language only, but it is not. Okay, and you can prove it. Okay, sir. Thank you. Yeah, yep. Yeah. So, any question here? So now, if someone is asking you, like, what is JavaScript? You can simply say JavaScript is a high level compiled programming language or you can say this is a high level minimum dual pass programming language dual pass means first it is getting compiled and then it is getting executed okay and like this you can prove them fine uh, do remember these two tools if you want to just uh, visualize your code you can use of AST uh, Explorer or you can go with the joint JS AST Explorer uh, visualizer. Okay, fine. Now here you can see we are done with the language behavior, how it works means it is a compiled programming language, not in an interpreted. Now we are going to learn about the keywords and reserve words. So anyone know uh, like what exactly the keyword is? A reserve word. I think uh, which is defined in uh, JavaScript only that says reverse uh, reserve. Both are same, or uh, reserve word and keywords are different. I think both are same. Okay. No, both are not same actually. A uh, reserve keyword is uh, like it has been used in like. Uh, you can say like it's uh, uh, used in library. I mean, built-in fun, built-in something. Uh, what can we say like? Ah, uh, you mean to say like uh, we can use from its library only? Yes, yes, exactly. Okay. It has okay. been reserved. Okay. Okay. So we'll see that. So as uh, we know, like uh, we do have English dictionary in that we have like lots of words are there, which is defined. And as per like different, different language, we have like uh, the dictionary for different, different languages and they have their own meaning. Okay, like that here also in JavaScript, we have some like sort of keywords that we will see which is defined and they have their own like a special meaning and the purpose in this language, which we are going to see. First, we will see the difference between the keyword and reserve word. So not here. So you can see this list abstract break care debugger double export finally go to so many things are there so these words are the keywords okay so they have like their own some special meaning in that we will see once we will start working on that we will see that but what is reserve word so keyword i'm saying means it is predefined words by that language. Okay. Now, let's say if you have to uh, declare a variable, okay, or if you have to uh, just declare a function, 
simply uh, i'm going to uh, just uh, declare a vari variable only so let's say i'm writing here num okay simply num so if i'm writing simply num is there any meaning of that if i'll press enter it will say on un uncalled reference error num is not defined means this javascript engine actually doesn't know what exactly num is it means this is not defined fine if i'm writing num is equal to 20 then what will happen we are storing some values yeah we are storing some values in num no, no. okay so here num is an identifier isn't it and in that i'm going to store value value so it means it is a kind of variable here yeah. temporarily i'm storing this value in it and in future wherever i want to reference this one i can simply call this num identifier isn't it but to define this i need to use this var keyword isn't it we need to use this var keyword here if you will not write like this then also it will work and if you'll call num you will get sorry a spelling mistake num you will get 20 value so here we have like certain uh rule to define like uh, if you want to define here so this was like ecmascript 5 standard we were using var okay still we use that but we'll see what exactly var let and const we do have some uh like uh, keywords here that we need to use actually to define or declare a variable so whenever you say var x what is the meaning of that simply let's say if uh, if i'm writing here 10 if you'll press enter you will get 10 if i think 10 plus 10 i'll get 20 isn't it but are you able to recall that value which you have added here no no so if you want to store that value okay and if you want to make use of them later in your program what you have to do you have to store it somewhere okay for that you need to declare a variable first okay so declaring a variable is nothing but allocating a memory in the where in ram actually okay it will store that in ram it will store memory for this i'm saying simply hey I want to just allocate some empty memory right right now here and give it a name as a fine. So it will simply create a memory with the name a so if you will check what is the value inside right now a so if you are not storing anything in JavaScript, it will be undefined do remember this. Okay, simply if you are declaring a variable and you are not storing any value in it it will be undefined we have lay, uh, like many corner uh, cases that i'll show you but like here i'm just starting like what is keyword and how to declare a variable both i'm uh, just uh, showing you at a time now you are going to say like hey i have already defined a container you can say or variable you can say or you can say simply like i have already allocated a memory and the name is a now in this one i want to store some value so it depends on you like what type of value you are going to store here let's say here i'm going to store 20. okay so it is immediately returning 20. now if you are going to call this like hey i have stored somewhere 20 what is the memory name or you can say the container name where i have a stored value is a now i want to use that 
So simply, if you are going to write a 40 plus, whatever value is inside that container, call that. So container directly, you can write here A. So what is the value inside A? You can see just now we have assigned 20. So 40 plus 20 is 60. So we are getting this one. So what is the main purpose of the variable? Reusability, isn't it? Whenever you want to use that value or update that value, you can use variable. Fine. First, I'll show you here the naming convention. Then I'll come to the keywords and reserve words. Naming convention. If you want to declare any identifier, especially right now I'm talking about the variable name, variable naming convention. You can use any alphabets, small or caps, okay? Let's say here I'm writing demo. So D is a capital case character. E is a small, M is a small, O is a small. You can use any number like demo one to three, okay? Or you can use here simply underscore also, okay? You can use here dollar also, fine. It means that even you can use any Unicode character, okay? Unicode character means, I'll show you that, like if you have like any Chinese character, Unicode character that you can place, but that is not meaningful but this language allows. Except these things, you cannot write anything here in name. Capital case, small case letter, underscore, any numeric value and dollar, except that you cannot write anything. Okay, do remember this. So simply if you are going to call like this, it will say, hey, this is not defined. What if you are going to declare like demo underscore one, two, three is fine. And what is the value inside this? As I said, if you will not assign anything, if you will not store anything inside that, you will get undefined always. Okay. So I said, here you can use capital alphabet, small alphabets, underscore, number, and dollar, except that you cannot use anything. And uh, if you're going to write uh, your variable name, you know, so you cannot start your variable name with numeric value, except that everything will work. Okay. If you're going to write one, two, three, demo, and here you are writing var just to declare a variable. See, invalid or unexpected token means this is not allowed. You can use, but you cannot start. If you'll write simply demo, and at the end you can use here one, two, three, that is perfectly fine. Okay. If you want to start with dollar demo, this is also fine. As I said, except that number you can start your identify name with anything which is allowed, like capital or small case alphabets, underscore, one, two, three, uh, and dollar. These things you can use in your identifier, but you cannot start with that numeric values. But still we do follow, like uh, we have like uh, some naming convention thing here, apart from that, like camel case, Okay, camel case we use, a small case letter we use, caps also we use, caps generally we use for constant values. Okay, if you have pi value, simply you need to write like this, where and for constant we write pi and 3.14159 is the pi value. So this is constant. Okay, generally, whenever you are going to write any identifier name, that should be meaningful. Don't write simply like this, where X is equal to 10. This is not meaningful. Okay, if you are going to write here, uh, let's say 
amount is equal to 10. So this, this is meaningful, okay? If you have two words, two words, remaining amount, don't write like this. So as per the camel case notation, what you have to do, if you have just a single word, each and everything should be in a small case. If you have two words, then first word will be complete in a small case. And for the second word, a starting character will be in caps like this remaining amount. So this is known as camel case. Okay. Another thing here we have snake, snake case also. So a snake case is nothing but you can write like this remaining underscore amount like this. So you can write this one or as I said, that camel case, but the most popular one is camel case. So in real time, if you are going to write any identifier name, that should be meaningful and try to write that one in camel case only. Okay. So simply you can write here like Let's say here, bank account, okay? Just an example I'm giving here, like this. So the camel case, as I said, the first word will be complete in small case. And for the next word, the starting character should be in capital case. Okay, so always follow this one and the naming convention. Now you know how to write that the nomenclature, the you can use a small or capital case alphabets, numbers, dollar and uh, underscore. Okay, but you have uh, you uh, don't have to use that one, uh, that numeric value in the beginning of the identifier name because that is not allowed. Second thing here, now we know how to declare a variable. Okay, by using var keyword. Another way is also there, late and const, that I'll uh, explain you later. Now, if I'm writing var, okay, and let's say here we have um, Here we have these lists, okay? So simply I'm going and uh, here say, let's let async yield, okay, a static implements interface. These things are there in list if you'll see here. Okay, uh, where is a static? Uh, okay, I need to check that one. Let is there. The last two. Yeah, here the static is then. So if you'll check, no, uh, everything is there in that list. But just I'm going to show you one thing. Like some people will say that keyword and reserve word both are same, but it is not same. Practically, I'm going to show you. To declare a variable, you know, we use let also. There is some other meaning of that. For asynchronous programming, uh, when you want to fetch some data from the server, okay, then we use async keyword. That is also keyword. Let's say async. And do remember, never ever use any keyword as an as an identifier name. This is the rule actually. But here, see one uh, corner case, just edge cases. I'm going to show you here this is one exception let's say i'm going to use var async and if you'll see in this list where is that async let me check here in this list await is there no 
on top async also should be there i'm not able to see where is that but async is also a keyword okay so what i'm going to do here is simply as an identifier name i'm going to use here async is equal to 30 it is not giving me any error and this is a keyword so keyword means we cannot use that keyword name as an identifier isn't it and if you'll call this async no see it is working like an identifier i'm able to uh, use that one as an uh, identifier another example i can show you here let's say let so let also if i'll call it is giving me 30. If I'll use await, here I'm getting, see, error that unexpected reserve word. You cannot use this one. So you got my point. Late is also a keyword, async is also a keyword, but these two things are like not reserve. Okay. Reserve means you cannot use as an identifier. Okay. So await is an uh we can say uh await is a, a reserve word and these two things are keyword but not reserved now you got my point what is reserve word and keyword if you are not able to use any keyword as an identifier Yeah, so I was saying that reserve word is that we cannot use an identifier name and keywords are those also you can see async and let is also a keyword, but we are able to use these two uh, keywords as an identifier name. So that's why I'm saying like these two things are keyword, but not reserve word, but a wait is a reserve word. Okay we cannot use this one as an identifier. So this is the difference between keyword and reserve word. So you can say simply all the reserve words are keywords, but not all the keywords are reserved. Okay. Any question? Anyone? Sir, uh, what is uh, a sync and await? A sync and await is a keyword we will use. Uh, as I said, no, when you want to uh, retrieve some data from server, let's say uh, you have here like 10 functions, okay? So one function is getting executed, second function is also getting executed, and third one is, let's say, uh, a function which is uh, rendering some data or it is giving some request from the server, okay, uh, to load something. So let's say if server is taking some time, to uh, just serve the data. So meanwhile, it should not wait. Okay, another function should not wait. At that time, internally, this async and await, if you'll use, that I'll show you. Uh, uh, like once I'll come to that async and await function, I'll show you how it works in asynchronous programming. So at that time, it will allow the another function, the another function which is waiting for this function to, uh, this should be executed then only, another uh, function should start. So at the time, async and await allows that meanwhile server is going to serve the data, next function should execute. It will, it will not block your code execution, okay? So for that purpose, we use async. Any question, anyone? Now we are clear with how to declare a variable 
and what is the use of that means main purpose we can say is the reusability okay so keywords and uh, identifier naming convention is done now we are going to see here data types if you have any question you can ask me so till now uh, like we know the definition of javascript javascript is a programming language what type of programming language we can say are the high level and compiled programming language okay some people say it as like weakly typed weakly typed means what is the meaning of weakly typed okay so now that i'm going to show you you can uh, if you are noting down you can simply write the heading as the data types in javascript so we do have two different types the categories you can say in javascript for data types the first one is i'm going to show you here that is primitive okay primitive types so in primitive we do have first one let's say number we can pass number okay another one here we have a string then we have boolean we have null undefined okay we have another also that is another one is symbol and the last one is big int okay so these are the primitive data types another one is non primitive which is known as object type is array and object okay so these two are like you can say if you are going to create an array you need to use the combination of number string boolean only this is not a special type so that's why this is not a primitive and in object also so we do have different different structure for this one so you can note down like the we do have two different types of uh, data type in javascript the first one is primitive and uh, under primitives you can note down these names like number string boolean null undefined symbol and big int and in non primitive we do have array and objects okay this is the basic thing fine this language is dynamic also weakly typed and dynamic i'm showing you each and everything practically and based on that only i'm giving you the definition still the javascript definition is not completed the final definition after these two things will be the final definition you can say what exactly javascript language is let's say now we know like if you want to declare a variable to a store a data what you have to do simply you need to write var okay i'm giving name as data is equal to 10 fine so what is the value inside data right now i'm saying simply is 1 second what i'm saying here is open board yes so if i'm writing simply here where data is equal to 10 what is the meaning of that i am saying hey javascript engine just create a container or allocate a memory okay where i want to store some data but before that name it as 
data, the container, and a stored value as 10, fine. So here, this is a container, or you can say this is a memory. Name is, or you can say the memory reference, instead of like C, it will be like hexadecimal number 0x, F0259, something like that. So that is very difficult to remember. So instead of this memory reference, okay, we are giving it a name. So if I'm giving a like name here, so by name, it is very easy to recall that. Whenever I want to use, simply I'll use here, I'll call it as, hey, I want to call data. So whenever I'm calling data means I'm just referring that value, which is stored inside that particular memory reference, which is 10. So simply you can say, what is the meaning of a variable declaration means we are allocating memory, okay, at runtime. So simply it will create a container. It will store the data in it. Whenever you want to call that, it will give you that data. So right now, right now, here I have written it as where is just for the declaration forgot about that that is a, a keyword and it has a special meaning why i'm using here just to declare a variable okay or an identifier okay what type of identifier it is it is a variable identifier might be a function or an object name anything it could be okay but here in this case here we have a variable let's say here data is the name and right now I have a stored in it, that is 10. So 10 is what? Number or a string or Boolean? Anyone can tell me? Number. number. It's a number, fine? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I'm switching to this one. So if you want to check, Simply, if you want to check the value, what is inside data, simply call the data. So whenever, as I said just now, whenever you are calling that reference, it will give you the value, whatever is inside that. So by default, it is undefined if you are not storing it. Fine. I'm not going to change anything. Now, simply what I'm saying, data is equal to Hello, this is called as reassignment. Okay, I'm assigning a value, no? Isn't it? Data is already declared. And now I'm going to assign here data as hello. Just let me press enter here. What is the value now? If you'll check the data here is hello. So it means just now here I have assigned 10. Inside one, Oh, where is that eraser? Okay. Yeah, inside one container, we can store at a time just one value, isn't it? We cannot store more than that. So previously it was 10. Now what I have stored here, I have stored here, Hello. Hello. And what is the type of this data? That string. is in a string format, isn't it? And right now here we have what value in it? That is hello. Fine. I have not changed the container. Container is same. Memory space is also same. Okay. Reference is also same. Just what I have changed here? It's data. Just observe that, okay. What I'm doing here. Next thing. Again, here it was hello, no? Now I'm going to do is, you know what? I'm going to write here data is equal to true. Okay. One more thing. As I have written here where data in the beginning, is equal to 
10 first time okay at that time if you want to check what type of data it is okay simply you can write here like data it will give you the value it is not giving me type so if you want to check type simply you can write type of and some people you know write like this type of this is a function okay this is not a function actually i'll tell you what exactly type of is simply if you are writing one plus two into three so it means it will evaluate first all those values and whatever the final type is there no that it will show you and the type of is now one plus two is two into three first two into three is six six plus one is seven so type of seven is nothing but number so it is returning you in a string form single quote number okay so the type of seven is number so likewise type of is a unary operator okay one more thing i'm going to explain you you know what is unary and binary operator What is operand, you know? Anyone? Let's see. Yes, sir. Yeah, please, uh, if you can, uh, tell me like what is operand then? Operand is like uh, multiplication, uh, addition, subtraction, that. Uh, see, here, let's, let's say you have five. Three. Yeah. Okay, five. Simply, if I'm writing five, is there any meaning of that? I'm not doing any operation, just that is five. If I'm writing five and then seven, it's is there any meaning? So these are operands. So until and unless if I'll not give an operator in between those two numbers, this is meaningless actually. So these two are five and seven are operands. Now I'm going to add here one operator. See, if I'll just give an operator, plus operator that is nothing but arithmetic operator only okay so plus means it is just adding so what it is doing here this plus operator is working on these two operands and what it is doing it is just adding those two values okay i'm not going to change now operand just i'm going to change the operator so based on the different different operator with the same operand we are getting different results isn't it so operand operand means the operator which perform operation on that element that is known as operand an operator means operator means which is going to perform operation on those two operands that is known as operators so as you can see here we do have two operands okay Two means here, uh, like if you'll say by binary, if I'm saying so by means two. So this is nothing but binary operator because it is going to perform operation on two different operands. So that's why it is binary operator. Okay. If you are going to perform like this, let's say here you have 56. Okay. And if I, you are going to check your type of, it will give you single quote a string, isn't it? So right now it is a string, but if you will change like this, simply just before this, if you put a plus, so this is a number because this is a unary operator. And what it is doing actually, it is going to change the type of this one. It will simply convert this 56 a string into number so see here we are getting this one in blue color and a string in red color so, so this binary op operator is like uh, plus plus increment and decrement something binary unary operator you told right yeah unary that is also unary operator okay. uh, that's what i'm explaining here okay. so if you are writing simply plus okay and Plus is what it is doing here. It is just converting this 56 to number. Simply, if you'll write this one 56, just I'm going to prove you. Let's say one, two. 
and plus one two is nothing but a string and simply you are writing three four so it will add actually like a string only one two three four it is not adding 12 plus 34 is like uh, 46 it is not adding like that because this is a string this is a number what you can do simply here this plus is binary operator okay binary because it is performing on these two operands one is a string which is 12 and here one is number that is 43 sorry 34 so what if you want to add that so first what you need to do this should be converted into number so here we have unary operator so this individual operator is working on this operand only so if an operator is working on just one operand that is known as unary operator so likewise we do have many unary operators as you said uh, plus plus operators so that also is there uh, but i'll show you that one later in this case you can see right now so if any operator is working on two operands that is a binary operator if it is working on just a single operand that is unary operator so likewise here we have type of okay so type of is also a unary operator okay so if you'll simply write here now data it will give you a number now instead of writing that so now you got my point what is the binary operator what is the unary operator ternary operator i'll let you know later when i'll start the operator se session so now if you'll check just here the type of okay type of data here you are getting what number which i have already mentioned in that uh, board next time what you are doing simply one second yeah so next time what i'm going to do is simply i'll write here data is already defined so no need to write again where just i'm going to write here it as hello same container now if i'll check the same container type it is a string okay previously it was number now it is a string now what i'm going to do what I have written here now, true. And if you'll check now, what is the type of that container? Is Boolean. So if you can observe here, the container is same, okay? Container is same, I'm just changing the value. So if I'm changing the value, type of the identifier is also getting changed. You can see here, based on its value. So you can say simply here, in another language like in c if you're writing int a okay if you are writing int a so what is the meaning of that you know in that language if you are familiar with c i think uh, see here if i'm writing simply int a so this is known as a static typing so in the beginning only i'm saying hey i want to allocate memory okay and what is the type of this one is integer give name as a format should be decimal that is format d okay address should be ampersand a and in this you can only store integer type of value so there is a restriction isn't it you cannot store float here even though if you store 40.5 it will return you just 40 not 40.5 but this is not the case here with javascript here this one is a static programming language that's why when you are saying int a there itself you are restricting that hey i want to allocate memory and give it uh, like the type as integer 
variable name as a format should be percentile d or percentile i address is ampersand a and here you can store at the last you are saying you can store only integer type value okay but here in our case i have declared only once and i'm able to change the value here if you can see okay now here i'm going to store as true so true is nothing but a boolean value so you can observe here name is same i have declared only once container is same i'm changing what value so whenever you are saying type of data it is not giving you the type of this container it is giving you the type of the value which is stored inside this container okay that's why this is javascript you can say is a dynamic programming language okay there is no specific type for a variable whatever type you are going to store in that variable that will be the type of its container or variable got it so here if i'm writing simply now uh, let's say data is equal to null so here we have a like bug in this language now if you'll check the type of data it will show you object but it is not an object later i'll show you a uh, simply you can write like this null instance of an object it will give you a false means null is not an object this is a bug actually but this comes under in primitive type only so here you can say simply why it is known as weekly type now you know like if you will declare a variable and whatever type you want to uh store in that variable you can do it so that's why it is known as weekly type and dynamic why i'm saying because only once you need to declare it and any type of variable oh uh, sorry any type of data you can store in that variable so simply you can say about javascript javascript is a high level programming language and what type of it is like if i'm talking about the the interpreted and compiled so it is a compiled programming language second thing uh you can say this one is a weakly typed and dynamic programming language this is also a oh, point you can uh, note down one more thing this is a case sensitive case sensitive means if you are writing var like this x so this is not valid so here if you are writing this in a small case x so this is valid so you need to write in the way which is uh like uh, if the identifier or sorry the keyword is defined in the smaller case you need to write in the smaller case only so javascript is a case sensitive high level dynamic and weakly typed in uh, compiled programming language okay so till now we have learned like what type of language it is and how to declare a variable what is keywords what is reserve words and even how to check the types of any variable okay any question guys values and its types already we have seen operand we have seen operator we have seen you know about the expression and instruction and a statement anyone yes okay what is uh, the meaning of like first operand we know now operator also we know what is expression expression means which gives some value and statement means it just like does not return anything it's just like a statement not exactly the first part was true like if you are going to evaluate something that is known as an expression but instruction say if i'm writing simply yeah please go ahead set of rules 
conditions instruction is set of rules yeah you can say what is the statement then a statement can be a like multiple expression it can contain multiple instructions it can have but it should be meaningful like one complete sentence is nothing but one statement expression is nothing but a uh, like you can say the chunk of like the uh code which has a special meaning by itself like if you are writing a into b that is also one expression and if you are saying a into b that is one instruction also that multiply a with b isn't it that i am going to show you see here anyway so here i am writing evaluate is equal to Two into three plus five or six into seven. Okay. Divide by three. Semicolon. Now here, can you please tell me, like, first one? How many operators are there? <laughs> first operators or tell me operands operand only you can tell me if you can five operand are five uh, can you please tell me the operand name two three six seven three two three six seven three fine now we are done with the operand operators how multiplication, multiplication, addition. One, two, here three. I mean, it's same only multiplication, right? Yeah, but we need to count like how many operators are there individually. One, two, three, four. Four. Yes. A bracket also. Bracket. Bracket is also, yes. Exactly. Now. See, this is like individual operator. This is also individual operator. But you can say this is a brace. One operator, it is there. Anything else? One, two, three, four. Okay. Five, six. Anything else? Semicolon? Yes. Anything else? Equal to? Yes, that is also an operator. Okay, assignment operator. It assignment is. operator. Yeah. So how many operators are there? If you'll count them. Seven. Eight. 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 Yeah. Okay. See here we have this is a first C here. The left parents is one operator right pants is one operator means it is just uh, here it is going to evaluate first and they have their uh, some precedence also okay if you'll see the associativity and a precedence table that we will see in in the operators so, so you are counting to uh, the braces right yes okay. because lexical analyzer if you'll go there it will count this one as a different punctuator and this one is also different punctuator it will just put it there in the uh, AST visualizer. You will be able to see there. Okay. Here we have multiplication. Here we have uh, what we say plus, then multiplication, then division, and then assignment operator. Now we are done with the operand operators. Can you tell me how many instructions are there? instructions one like evaluate one, sir, one. Uh, one by one you can go like how it will work instruction if i'm saying no so first what it will do hey declare a variable with this name first instruction it is saying okay 
नेक्स्ट इवेल्युएट दिस एक्सप्रेशन सेकेंड इंस्ट्रक्शन इन दैट मल्टीप्लाई दीज टू ऑपरेंट्स नेक्स्ट इंस्ट्रक्शन the final result will be added with this one next instruction the evaluated value should be multiplied with this one next instruction okay again divide the final product with this next instruction assign the total outcome whatever is there in evaluate next instruction the last instruction is terminate this line with this semicolon so you can count like that so instruction is that okay now we are done with the operand operator expression okay expression we will see uh, like instruction we have seen expression now can you please tell me see 2 into 3 is one expression isn't it and then the final uh, whatever the product is there 3 into or 2 into 3 will be added with this that is also one expression and in bracket whatever we have that is also one expression you can write like that okay this one into 7 is one expression the final output of this expression divided by 3 is also one expression and you are going to assign this into evaluate that is also one expression only so but after bracket uh, it will uh, go for uh, division right precedence no precedence is same for this one multiplication and division so if the precedence is same it will check the associativity and for both multiplication and division associativity is left to right so first it will multiply that we will see that we will see in operators i'll uh, explain you each and everything don't worry about that but here yeah in this case it will first multiply because precedence is same if precedence is same it will go for the associativity okay so that is known as expression and the final thing is when you are going to terminate something with a complete statement is known as when you have the complete expression or instruction you are saying hey now end this thing that is known as statement because here we have many instructions many expressions isn't it the complete thing here is one statement so you can say like set of expressions or instructions is known as uh, which has a like meaningful uh what we say what i was about to tell you like uh, yeah so for a statement you can say if you have like a meaningful uh expressions in it or instruction and if it is completing the the requirement whatever you have and you are done with that that is known as one statement and the simply you can understand here we have whenever we have one uh, like a uh, semicolon that is known as line terminator or a statement terminator we have then you can say that is a complete statement but that is not the always case the same thing we have if a statement also that i'm going to show you like when we will start the control statement section like there we will not have the semicolon that is not mandate okay but in this case whenever you have one expression you need to terminate that with semicolon but here also if you are not giving automatically one thing is there asi concept in javascript that is automatic semicolon insertion concept okay so it will automatically assume that if there is nothing it will terminate it there okay so this is all about the operand operators operators means types of operator and how operator works and how many types of operator that i'll explain that is a separate uh, section but the basic thing like how to identify that whether it is a operator or a operand that we are done with okay if you want to comment the last thing for today comments so in javascript we have like two different types of comment one is single line comment 
okay single line comment that you can if you want to comment or just single and simply forward slash you have to give here to forward slash okay it will comment it won't execute actually if you want multi-line comment simply you have to start with the forward slash followed by star and you have to end with a star followed by forward slash and here also okay nested comment is not allowed like if you want to write like inside comment if you'll write like this it is not possible actually you will get one error syntactically it is not true because this language grammar does not allow to write the nested comment so you know now we have like two different types of comments one you can use a single line comment and one is multi-line comment that is forward slash star and you have to end it with a star forward slash is that clear so today i have just covered the basic things so the more interesting thing is going to start from tomorrow okay